Well, we've been going backwards from the book of uh, Revelation to the book of Genesis, trying to do them in chronological order. But uh, as we've gotten to the prophets, we have 400 years of prophets, and they overlap First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles. Uh, so we have some overlap there, and we're doing the prophets first, and then we'll go back and pick up those books. But we also need to remember that some of the prophets overlapped each other. And today, as we start a new prophet, it's the prophet Isaiah, who wrote from 740 to 680 before Christ. And uh, he overlaps with Hosea, who wrote from 755 to 710, and Micah, who wrote from 710 to 705. He also uh, wrote during the time of four, maybe five different kings. And uh, that's made clear to us in the first chapter of the book of Isaiah, which is quite interesting because the book of Isaiah is broken down into three parts. Uh, the first 35 chapters are about the judgment of Judah and Israel, where uh, Jeremiah, excuse me, Isaiah spent most of his time in Jerusalem. And then chapters 36 through 40 are historical. And then chapters 40 through 66 are messianic. That is, they talk about the Messiah. Now, many people have said that the book of Isaiah is like a miniature Bible. And that is the first 39 chapters, which would equal the first 39 books of the Bible, uh, deal with judgment of Judah and Jerusalem. And that's the equivalent of the Old Testament telling us that we could never get to heaven by works and we could never be good enough. And so the judgment would come. The next 27 chapters in the book of Isaiah uh, are about hope. And of course, the 27 chapters of the New Testament is all about hope. Hope that we have through Jesus Christ who died for our sins. And by our repentance, uh, we can find salvation. So we see that miniature Bible of 39 plus 27, 66 books. And Isaiah has 66 chapters. It's the third largest prophetic book, only behind Jeremiah and Ezekiel. It has 37,407 words. And uh, we, we certainly can understand that all of these things that he talks about in the way of prophecy did not come to pass during the time that he was writing. Where the siege of Jerusalem was 586. The Babylonian uh, exile of Daniel and the first ones that were exiled uh, is all the way back to 605 BC. So you can see, although he prophesied accurately all of the thing, events that would happen, uh, likely he didn't get to see any of them happen. Going to be looking at an interesting time period. He saw good kings and bad kings. He saw Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, and perhaps some time with Manasseh. Uh, nevertheless, uh, he is one of the one of the major four prophets, and uh, he certainly is uh, going to give us some interesting times of study. Isaiah was married and had at least two children, and that's revealed to us in the book. In chapter 1, he starts out by telling us these are visions that came to him from God uh, about what was going to happen in Judah and Jerusalem during the reign of those uh, kings. But he also says, uh, and uh, I won't uh, actually roll the scripture because of the length of this introduction, uh, listen heavens, hear O earth. Uh, and he says, the sons have revolted. And he goes on and he says, uh, Oxen know, and donkeys know, but Israel doesn't. <laughs> well, I, I think you could say that America today, too. Oxen know, donkeys know, but Americans don't seem to get it. They don't seem to understand how far we've drifted from God. And uh, tomorrow we'll pick up again with Isaiah, but that's my thought for the day. Uh, we're, we're as dumb as oxen and donkeys as far as understanding how far we've drifted from God and that judgment has to come.